Well, to talk more about all these developments on the vaccine front, the fact that we're going to restart exports, also uh, the travel restrictions on vaccinated Indians in the UK and the opening up of the US in November, we're now joined by Dr. Sarman Singh, Director Ames in Bhopal. Also, Dr. Ishita Devedi, Assistant Professor of Medicine at Lenox Hill Hospital, joins us from the US. Uh, Dr. Sarman Singh, uh, you know, first I want to uh, talk to you about this UK rule about uh, Indians having to be quarantined, even though they'll be fully vaccinated now. India is taking this up. Uh, the foreign minister has said that he's taken it up with the UK foreign minister. What do you think the reasoning is behind this? I think it is a very pertinent question you are asking. I, I think WHO should take a call because every country is having their own uh, system uh, and uh, the, the quarantine policies. So I think many of the vaccines they are not recognizing. Some are having, you know, seven days quarantine, some are having 14 days quarantine, some are recognizing COVID shield, some are not recognizing. So I think a common agency like WHO should take a call and they should, you know, frame policies that what should be done and what should not be done. Right, Doctor, speaking of WHO, we do know that in August, WHO did call out that there were some counterfeit uh, Covishield vaccines found in, in Africa and in Asia and in India. Do you think this is something to do with this decision or do you think, it, you know, hopefully India will be able to sort it out with the UK? Very pertinent, uh, but it is a fact. It is true. It is true. And, in fact, the uh, centre even all sent out a Brazil, letter to all the yeah. states. The centre yeah, sent out Brazil a letter to already, all the states yeah. to how to recognise, you know, the correct vaccines and some parameters to recognise the vaccines by. Yeah, so manufacturing has been doubted, which is unfortunately not good for India. So the both the you know vaccines they have been COVID sealed and Covaxin they have been the 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 quality checks and other things they have been questioned. So it is you know uh, not a good taste for India, but definitely we should you know uh, uh, overcome all these uh, you know issues. Right, Dr. Ishita Devedi, welcome news uh, for Indians that uh, you, that the U.S. will be opening up travel uh, in November, and this will, uh, you know, lots of families have been separated for so long. So big relief for the Indian community. Yes, definitely. I think it comes as a very welcome news to everybody on both the sides in the U.S. as well as in India. I think now they're allowing uh, vaccinated travelers from uh, all the EU countries as well as you know India and Brazil which were in the earlier part of the year hit pretty badly with COVID. So I think this comes as a very welcome news and not only is it going to help families and relatives, but I think even economically for both the sides, it's going to have a great benefit. So we're all looking forward to it. The date actually remains to be seen. They're saying that it's going to open in early November. Um, but I think uh, it remains to be seen what date exactly and if we still need to show a proof of a negative COVID test before taking off or after landing. And what is the situation uh, currently in the U.S.? Uh, you know, cases uh, have been uh, fairly high, and, but mainly in, in the southern states? Yes, I think uh, at this point, it's really the pandemic of the unvaccinated, unfortunately. So it's highly preventable. Most of the cases and especially the deaths and the severe hospitalizations that we're seeing are unfortunately in the unvaccinated, easily preventable again. And also we're actually seeing a higher number of cases within uh, children. So even though they're not very sick, not uh, most of the cases that are getting hospitalized are in the elderly and people with comorbidities, the cases amongst children have gone up, especially since schools have opened now recently in September. But this comes at a pertinent time as well, where Pfizer has actually uh, shown efficacy in children between the age of five and 11. So we're hoping that as it hopefully in the future gets approved, that we can also decrease the rates of infection within children as well. All right. We're waiting, uh, you know, for children to get start getting vaccinated here in India. We're also joined by Dr. Rajesh Parikh. Uh, Dr. Sarman Singh, the other issue I want to discuss with you is that India is to resume exports of vaccines. Now, we do know that, uh, you know, India stopping the exports did affect mm -hmm. other countries where, you know, Indian vaccines were meant to go. Covishield had, uh, was meant to be supplied to many of the poorer countries that still have not got enough access uh, to vaccines. However, this has raised questions in the sense that uh, we still have not vaccinated the majority of our own population. Uh, so are we in a position to export vaccines? Do we have excess vaccines? That's what well, yesterday we all heard uh, mm -hmm. and we were having the VC also That's with the Honorable uh, Minister.
so uh, that's what the know, data says have that you know we have uh, uh, stock more than uh, enough for the uh, vaccinating indian population and therefore government has decided that we can export simultaneously yeah right uh, dr parekh your view on this uh, yes kargi as you are aware i have always been a firm supporter of exporting vaccines outside of the country of course uh you know with the caveat that we do need to vaccinate people within the country as well i think if there's one thing that the pandemic has taught us uh is that as long as one of us is unsafe all of us are unsafe so therefore it is in our enlightened self interest to export vaccines outside particularly around uh the countries that are there as to the timing of that export uh i'm sure that the powers that be have factored in various things i certainly hope that they have factored in the fact that very soon we are going to need to vaccinate our uh, young population the population below 18 which in our demographic uh, constitutes a substantial chunk of the overall population and also the fact that considering vaccination began sometime around march or april uh in the not too distant future uh we are going to have to look at the booster doses uh initially of course for the adults and then uh, of course uh, the doses for the children as well so i am hopeful that these factors have been computed into the calculation regarding the timing of the export but overall uh, i think it's our duty right one of the reasons is also said to be the prime prime minister's traveling to the us and uh, this uh, issue of uh, india not exporting vaccines uh, it, it was thought that the president biden may raise it uh, with india and and you know now this announcement coming uh, but having said that uh, you know this issue of the vaccine inequity is something that the who has been going on about and dr ishita devedi uh, there, there has been uh, you know who has also called that to not uh, encourage the third dose or the booster dose of the vaccine still more people people across the world can get vaccinated and the us has also come into a certain amount of criticism over this yeah i think at this point they are strictly limiting it to people who either are immunocompromised or i think they're also going to recommend it later in the year for people above 65 but they're definitely not recommending it for the general population and i think part of the reason is because they want to provide vaccine equity and use the doses that are available judiciously in the people that where it's most uh likely needed all right uh, dr parek earlier we were discussing with dr uh, singh about uh, also the, this issue in the uk of uh, indian indian vaccines not in a sense being recognized and uh, you know double dose the indians having to still quarantine in the uk where where we've been uh, put in that category uh, of various countries whose uh, vaccines are not being recognized your views on this though it is being taken up at the highest level and uh, you know the foreign minister has said he's taken it up with his uk counterpart uh well uh, gargi i'm uh, not uh, too familiar with the nuances of orwellian uh, double speak but on the one hand the uk government at least claims that they're working very hard to ensure that uh, you know this disparity is uh, removed on the other hand the 10 day quarantine period continues uh yet again uh, there is considerable pressure on india to export vaccines around the world so you know somewhere we need to make uh, sense out of all of this and particularly in the united kingdom it is ironic because uh, you know the vaccine is to a large and substantial extent a uk vaccine it's the oxford vaccine being marketed by astrazeneca and being manufactured in india uh, i can think of few other vaccines which are that global that international so there seems to be something supremely ironic in this uh, 10 day quarantine period but then on the other hand uh, you know the other hand of the united kingdom government uh, says that this is not right and we are working towards it so i think it's an internal dialogue between uh, various arms of the united kingdom and i believe it is as much in their interest as it is in ours and that of the rest of the world that uh, this absurd disparity between the manufact vaccine manufactured in india and that manufactured in the united kingdom the same uh, vaccine mind you uh, be removed uh, as quickly as possible 
No, absolutely. On one hand, the, you know, we're going to export this vaccine and send it to other countries. And on the other hand, it's not being recognized in the UK. An absolutely uh, important point being made there. I'm out of time. Thank you so much all for joining us on the program this morning.